What's good, Raider Nation? It's your boy, Sanji, and today I want to talk to you guys about the Oakland Raiders 53-man roster. Now that I've had a chance to look it over and just be more thorough with it and just kind of understand the bigger picture of what Gruden is trying to build. First and foremost, one of the things that surprised me Sunday morning was I found out the Oakland Raiders put a claim in for Deshaun Kaiser. Now, that made no sense to me because we already had Derek Carr, and two other competent backup quarterbacks, including Mike Glennon and Nathan Peterman. So there was no reason for us to put a claim in. Now, it was shocking to me because not only did we put a claim in for Deshaun Kaiser, but then we ended up cutting Josh Morrow, who I really like. Now, a lot of people might not necessarily like Morrow, but he brings a lot of value to the Oakland Raiders on early run downs. He's going to be a solid base defensive end for the Raiders. He's strong. He can play that strong side. And he's going to be a good fit for us, especially for that Paul Gunther defense. Now, getting back to the quarterbacks, it actually came out today, Monday morning, that Nathan Peterman will end up on the injured reserve, and he will not play for the Oakland Raiders for the whole entire season. So when you think about it now at this point, there's a reason why they brought in Deshaun Kaiser. It makes sense that Kaiser is going to be that third backup. Now, what doesn't make sense to me, which I would definitely question John Gruden about, is why in the hell do we need three quarterbacks? We let Keelan Doss leave. We let we cut him. We let him go to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, of course, he had his choice of who he wanted to play with, either the Oakland Raiders or the Jacksonville Jaguars, but that's besides the point. At the end of the day, he's going to go whomever pays him more money. So if the Jaguars say, hey, we'll give you $15,000 a week, and the Raiders say, we'll offer you eight. He's going to take 15000 He's going to want to set his family up. Plus, there's less competition in the wide receiver group in Jacksonville. It's much easier for him to make the active roster. It's a smart decision for himself to go to Jacksonville rather than have to compete and possibly end up getting cut next year in Oakland. So it makes sense from perspective, and I can't blame him for wanting to go where he feels that he has the best opportunity and the most chance for success. Now, of course, Jackson's quarterback is not that bad either. Nick Foles is a pretty good quarterback, so I think he fits in good with them. Now, one thing that I want to discuss with Keelan Doss is a lot of people were super high on him, and a lot of people thought he could be one of the uh, better wide receivers in the NFL. And I think uh, often what happens with some of these players that show potential is they start getting hyped up. And then eventually that hype turns into overhype. And I think that's kind of what happens with Keelan Doss. Doss leaving the Oakland Raiders is honestly not a big deal in my opinion. Because today he's like the fifth or sixth best wide receiver on the team, even if he was on the team. Now, I would rather keep him because I think he definitely has potential. But at the end of the day, let's be realistic. Is he ever going to be a top tier wide receiver? Probably not. Right, there's a better chance that he'll never pan out to be a top tier wide receiver than he will. Now, he can obviously help the Oakland Raiders, but being a rookie, how much help is he going to give us today? So again, I don't blame John Gruden for wanting to keep players like Ryan Grant, Hunter Renfro, JJ Nelson, and Tyrell Williams over Doss. Right? That's really a no-brainer. But the thing I do question is, why would you want to keep those quarterbacks over Keelan Doss? Right. Why? Why would you want to keep three quarterbacks? Now, of course, with Nathan Peterman going on the IR, John Gruden still brought in another quarterback, which was, of course, Deshaun Kaiser. So, again, that kind of makes sense that this is where John Gruden's headed. He wants to keep three quarterbacks on the active roster. So you can't really blame him. Anyways, I do want to shift focus now and talk a little bit about another player that ended up on the IR. And that's fourth round corner Isaiah Johnson. Now, initially, Johnson got hurt in week one of the preseason game. It was said that he actually got a concussion, but Gruden kind of clarified that a couple days later, and he said it wasn't a concussion. It was actually a facial injury. So either he got kicked in the face or something else might have happened. I don't know yet. I don't know what the actual reason for him being on the IR is, but it doesn't seem like it's something related to like an ACL or an Achilles, which is pretty typical. And that's definitely a much harder process to come back from. Of course, this being maybe a facial injury, he should be back next year. It's not a huge deal. The Raiders put him on IR and brought back Kyle Wolber, who was a linebacker for us. We'll kind of see what happens. We'll see what some of the development is regarding Isaiah Johnson. I definitely am disappointed. I wanted to see him play. 
but our secondary is pretty deep and that takes me to the next portion of my video i want to actually just break down the positions group on on the team and just give you guys my thoughts and opinions on the 53 man roster now that i've had more time to look it over and of course talking about isaiah johnson we'll stay right there with the secondary the secondary is pretty deep now if you just look at it from top to bottom we have some pretty talented players if you ask me honestly our first stringers as well as our second stringers at corner is pretty interesting now of course on the depth chart you can see that isaiah johnson is still listed he's not going to be listed probably that'll probably update a little bit later on um, this is as of monday morning at 11 50 ish uh, so he'll come off but between daryl worley gary on collie and Trayvon mullen we have three very solid corners and then keep in mind that lamarcus joiner is going to be a corner as well so between those four guys i feel really confident and then if our fifth corner is me Keyshawn nixon i'm super excited within this corner uh, group and then the safeties of course we have jonathan abram and carl joseph with eric harris rotating in that's a very good group if you ask me now of course we're definitely gonna have to continue to improve but it's still a nice group if you ask me there's a lot of potential there all 24 conley's uh, in his early 20s as well mullen's a rookie johnson's a rookie even though he's on ir uh, nixon's a rookie uh, lamarcus joiner is a vet but he's a very solid vet he was started three times in literally three or four drives and he allowed no catches so he played really good when we saw a small glimpse of him so hopefully he can keep on improving abram looks good joseph again had a really nice season at the end of last season so our secondary should be nicely built and they should be a good group. Hopefully Gunther can get them on the right track. Shifting over into the linebacking group, our linebackers eh, definitely need some work in my opinion. We had four linebackers before this morning and now we brought in Kyle, Kyle Wilbur. So we have our fifth linebacker. But really, I think we need some, some work. Uh, Nicholas Morrow is, is supposed to start, which I'm perfectly fine with. I think tomorrow is going to be a good linebacker. A safety converted to linebacker and the fact that he can cover is something i'm confident about he's obviously a much better coverage linebacker than Brandon marshall and marshall was regarded as one of the best right that's what we need from our weak side backer we need him to be able to cover the tight ends and i think morrow brings that for us between perfect whitehead morrow and lee i'm pretty confident within our group now the one that actually kind of surprises me uh, to see is josh morrow listed as the first ring defensive end and pj hall listed as the first string defensive tackle those two surprised me uh, not as as much with morrow because at the end of the day uh, i kind of expected morrow to be that base defensive end uh, but the pj hall one you know a lot of people love maurice hearse and a lot of people think maurice hearse is much better than pj hall and i've been saying this for the last year that that's not the case pj hall is a much better defensive tackle than maurice hearse Hurst might show these flashes where he gets upfield and he gets after the quarterback, but PJ Hall is more consistent and he does the things that you need your defensive tackle to do. Now, Clean and Farrell being the starting DN isn't a surprise. First round, uh, first rounder, fourth overall pick. Uh, Key being in there on that second string um, isn't surprising either. So again, I think from our uh, safeties and, and corners to our linebackers to our defensive line, I'm very confident in this group. I think Paul Gunther being the head of this group is going to be able to convert this group into a really solid group. Now, do I think we're going to finish top 15? Probably not. But if we can finish 15th, we should be good because on the offensive side of the ball, we're super dangerous if you ask me. Honestly, in my opinion, it starts up front with the offensive linemen. Now, keep in mind, this is not 100% updated because, of course, Rich Incognito is suspended and Gib Jackson is hurt. But if you look at Colton Miller, Rodney Hudson, Trent Brown, those three guys, believe me or not, I know Colton Miller, a lot of people don't like him. He struggled. Colton Miller is super, super talented run blocking. He's very, very good. Now, he might allow sacks, but when it comes to run blocking, the guy has it, man. I'm telling you guys right now, he's very quick. He's... He's able to hook players, get in front of players. He's a good run blocker. And I think we're going to dominate once Gabe Jackson and Richie Incognito come back. We're going to dominate the run game. Now, one of the things that's kind of interesting here is Jordan Devy is still regarded as a center rather than as a guard. I would rather see him listed as the second string right guard and Andre James as the second string center because I really do believe that 
if something were to happen to Rodney Hudson in the first week or so, or, uh, you know, prior to Gabe Jackson coming back, I don't think Debbie goes back to center. I think Honor James steps in and Debbie stays at right guard. So I would rather see Debbie line shown as a right guard. Not a big deal, but I think our offense is going to be really, really dangerous because of that offensive line unit. I think Tom Cable is a good coach. I think he gets a lot of bad rep. But then to take it a step further, look at our skills positions. I mean, A.B., Tyrell Williams, J.J. Nelson, Dwayne Harris, even though he's a punt returner slash kick returner. And then we have Josh Jacobs, Jalen Richard, Derek Carr, Alec Ingold. I mean, our offense is going to be really, really dangerous in my opinion, especially if that offensive line unit uh, is able to stay healthy, get healthy, and and just finish the season as a unit together. I think this offense is going to be really dangerous in my opinion. Uh, and again, I want to see those improvements from certain individuals. And then again, I want to just kind of see where we're at as a team. In a couple of games, you know, week three, week four, we'll kind of know where we're at as a team. Anyways, I want to shift focus to the next portion of my video. And that is to discuss not the 53 man roster, but to discuss the 10 practice squad players. You know, every year you start off with 90 guys, you get down to 53, right? 37 of those guys are getting cut, but then you bring back 10. So I want to talk about those 10 guys that are on the active roster because I think that is super, super important. I think a lot of the time practice squad players are always overlooked and they're not getting the credit that they deserve. At the end of the day, these are often rookie players or first or second year players that balled out during during preseason and the Raiders want to keep them around, right? That's the whole point of the practice squad. These players could eventually get activated onto the active roster. Now, one of the first players I want to mention on this list is Lester Cotton, one of my favorite players coming out of college. I've been watching Cotton for two years now, and when he came to the Oakland Raiders, I was super shocked. If you guys follow me on Just Blog Baby, the website that I post all my blogs and all my articles and all that stuff on, you guys would have known that I predict the Oakland Raiders to either draft him in the seventh round or pick him up as the undrafted free agent, in which they did. Now, I like Cotton a lot. I'm super excited for him that John Gruden saw enough to keep him on the roster. I personally saw enough from him during preseason to keep him on the roster. I posted a couple of videos on my Twitter in which he laid some very nice blocks. And it, it's exciting. You know, I'm, I'm super excited. Now, there's 10 players here. But out of the 10, there are three players that were not even part of our camp. That's running back Demaria Crockett, linebacker Justin Phillips, and tight end Eric Sauber. Those three guys were not part of the Raiders team or, or their roster, and they did not play for the Raiders. They all came from different teams. Crockett came from the Houston Texans, Phillips came from the Dallas Cowboys, and Saubert came from the Atlanta Falcons. So those teams cut these players and did not claim them. The Raiders went ahead and, and, and reached out to them and, and kind of like how the Jacksonville Jaguars stole Keelan Doss from the Raiders, we stole these three players from their respective teams. Now, their practice squad players, I never saw them play, so I'm going to have to watch that film of these players and just kind of see where they're at uh, within, within their skill set and stuff like that. But as far as the Oakland Raiders, the other seven guys that were with the team, a players that I actually like, one being Marcel Aitman, very solid wide receiver. I think once Keelan Doss left, they probably went back and reached out to him and decided, hey, we should just bring him back. Aitman and Doss are, are very similar in their build. They're both tall, they're both quick, uh, and they can make those catches. They can jump up and make those catches. Now, a player we drafted was Quinton Bell. He was cut, and I was not shocked that he was cut. I'm more shocked that he was brought back. The guy does not have any sort of skill set that I think the Raiders need. Yeah, he's 6'4", he's 250 plus pounds. He can definitely be a solid defensive end. But from what I understand, he's a wide receiver converted to a defensive end. And it shows on film. The guy does not have it. So I don't know why the Oakland Raiders decided to bring him back. I would have way rather kept other players on this practice squad. There's a lot of good players out there that we could have potentially kept. Now, Lester Cotton, I mentioned him to you guys. Super excited. Guard from Alabama came over to the Oakland Raiders. Hopefully, he gets to uh, develop a little bit more. He practices stronger, faster, more mobile. And then, hopefully, within one to two years, he can start for the Raiders at left guard. I wouldn't be surprised if him and Andre James are the future interior offensive linemen for the Raiders. Both guys are super, super talented. 
Now, of course, a lot of that's going to depend on, on both guys' development and both guys improving. If they don't, both guys can end up getting cut, right? It's not a lock that they're on the team. Now, uh, moving on down the list, the running back Crockett. I haven't watched him, so I can't really discuss too much about his game. Uh, he is from Missouri, which produces some good running backs, right? So uh, I'm excited to kind of see where he's at uh, within within his his career and just kind of see what kind of running back he is. Rico Gafford is a receiver that I'm not surprised we kept on the roster. Now he's been on the rock on the practice squad since his second year. So we'll kind of see what happens there, right? He's a super quick wide receiver. Uh, moving on, Dylan Mabin, another corner who actually showed some flashes. Good. I, I think he's a player that we should we should keep. Nick Nelson. I know a lot of people might not like him, especially after getting his ass kicked so much in the preseason uh, this past season. But honestly, he was pretty decent his rookie year. So I kind of want to see what happened with him. And I wouldn't just want him to leave. I'd actually rather keep him on the practice squad. Um, it's interesting because the fourth round pick. So I don't really know what happens to his um, to his salary. Like. You know, he was picked, so I'm assuming he got like, you know, a four or $500,000 signing bonus his rookie year, but now he's on the practice squad. So he was cut, so now he's on the practice squad. So are they paying him the minimum of $7,500 a week? Like, how are they paying his him out, and how is this contract? Like, I don't know, that's just something I thought about, um, of course. And then uh, moving down, uh, Justin Phillips, linebacker, Oklahoma State. I haven't watched him, I'm going to check him out. Uh, and then Anthony Rush, this guy, um, I'm super excited. He actually came with the Raiders. He actually had interest from three other teams, believe it or not. People wanted him. People reached out to him, and he ended up staying with the Raiders. Now, it's interesting because, as you guys all know, Big Jelly was put on the IR. And in my personal opinion, I strongly believe that Anthony Rush will be brought up at some point during this season from the practice squad to the active roster. Now, I don't know when that'll happen, but it will for sure happen. There's no way the Raiders go without having a true nose tackle. I know Hankins is a good player, but Hankins is not a true nose tackle. Hankins can play that three. Yes, he plays that one, but I think Anthony Rush is a little bit better at playing that, that one tech and, and being able to take on those double teams. Now, of course, I want to see how he goes, how he does against first springers. He'll be a great practice squad player. He'll give players like... Uh, Rodney Hudson, Gabe Jackson when he comes back, Richie Incognito, Lester Cotton. He'll give those players a great camp practice body, right? He's going to be one of those players that if it's during camp, if it's during practice, he'll get in there and he'll make things tough for him. And that's what we need. That's how, play, that's how you get better, right? But I do expect him to be called up from the practice squad to the active roster. Eric Sauber, another tight end. I Again, I did not watch him play yet. We actually stole him from the Falcons, but um, it'll be exciting to kind of see where he's at and kind of look into his development just a little bit. But that's pretty much the practice squad, right? We we got 10 guys, three that were not on our team. We got 10 guys, and, and I, I, I'm pretty confident with our practice squad. A player that I'll be watching is Nick Nelson, kind of following up on him and see how his development's coming along. You know, he's a fourth-round pick. I, I don't want to cut him. I know he struggled, but uh, you know there, who knows? What if he has a hurt foot or a hurt leg or a hurt arm or you know something? Right? Who knows? Some something could happen. I wouldn't want to cut him right away. I would definitely want to uh, see him develop a little bit. He's shown flashes. Um, anyways, I want to end the video here, but I want to know what you guys think about the roster and basically everything we discussed in this video. Please like, share, and comment below, and let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.